the kid snatches of destruction and mayhem. So, I lost my train of thought quickly. All right, so what I'm trying to show you is how to create your own asset library. One, so you can easily move assets from one project to another. And so those who are trying to update the auto terrain cover can actually update it on their own without me having to release an update that's not really an update of changes. It's just an update of a binary. And this is something that you will have to know to help you in the future or anything like that anyway. So I might as well show people how to do it as well as show them how to create their own so they can have their own asset collections or any other kind of thing that they make or that you make that you want to move from one project to another. Um, I'm going to delete this one that failed because I was trying to move too much stuff at once. And I can't delete it because I'm currently compiling it. So I'm going to stop that. Actually, it might be quicker if I just open uh, some other blank project so that way it's faster to load at least. So let's see, I have project two. This is a blueprint only project, so it should load fast and I shouldn't have RAM issues with trying to get this to work. And maybe some of my hair will. Stay in my head while I'm trying to do this. It's to work. And maybe it's on my hair will stay in my head while I'm trying to do this. Okay. So now we have a default project, plain and simple. I'm going to, like normal. Okay. So now we have a default. I'm going to make a plain folder, simple. call it materials. I'm going to, like normal. Okay. So now we have See, I made this awesome material called materials. this. And this material is so awesome, and I worked on it so long that. I want to use it for so my I own plugin. Awesome this. Material if I go so to plugins and I'm going to dismiss this, please go away. We're going to make a content only plugin. I think I actually have two things that are microphone source somehow. So maybe this will work now. I think I actually have two things that are microphone source somehow. Alright, so we want to make our content plugin. I'm going to call it asset library or asset, asset collections. Alright, so we want to make our And this plugin will be a plugin for anything I want to save and move from project to project. Of course, it's going to require an editor restart, so I'm just going to restart this. While it's restarting, I can go into the content folder. Well, ah, wrong folder. I can go into the plugin folder and see my new plugin. That's going to be the plugin I can move from project to project however I want to. So, if I can find the loading screen, that's going to be the plugin I can move from project to project however I want to. So, all right, here in the loading screen, I should be able to find my plugin, which is right here. I can go in and change the um the category, and I'll change it to asset library. Find my plugin, which is right here. I probably put a space in here without any issues. The category, and I'll change it to 
All right. So now we have a plugin. To be able to see this plugin, we need to go to plugin content, and there's my new plugin. All right. This plugin has no C++. It's just blueprint stuff. You can create your content here and save it and move it wherever you want. So I'm going to call this master material. All right, under master materials, that's why I want to, you know, store all my master materials. So I'm just going to move this file from here to here. Because of my previous failures in trying to do this video, I even said it in the last video before it went to pot and I had to restart. Um, when you're moving content from your main project to the plugin, make sure it's not too much too many megabytes in size and too much content you're trying to create at once because your memory will go haywire and your editor will crash and it will mess up your content. Um, especially if you're doing a move versus a copy. So one, make sure you do a copy and not a move like I just did. And two, when you do it, make sure that um, uh, make sure it's not too big. Now, one thing that you may want to do a move for is if it's something that's currently in the project you're using and you want the move process to update the links to the materials that you have in levels. Since you're not moving these levels over, you're moving your actual materials or mesh assets or whatever, and you don't want to manually go back and update those things. You can do a move, but like I said before, it's chancy. If you do a move and it crashes, it will ruin your links. Completely ruin your links to all your assets. And then you have to go back and manually fix everything that you've been doing. So, one, it's best to do it in a test project to make these many different things you're trying to work on and then move those over to your asset library. And then from there, put them in a real project and start linking them up. So that way, if you're moving from project to project that is an actual real project, when you update that library and you move it over to another project, if you tweak this grass over here to be the best grass in the world, and then your previous iteration for some other project does not have that, when you move your plugin from this project to the other one, if it's linked to your plugin, then it'll automatically update and save you time and optimization and things like that. So now we have a plugin. This plugin is made in, I don't know what engine version this is. Oh, it's already in 4.15. I was hoping it was 4.16 for this project. But I can still show this. Say we have this plugin. And now we want to move this over to another engine version. All we have to do is, one, archive it so that we know we have a backup copy of it. And what we can do with this archive is take it to another project, a fresh project. And what we can do with this archive is, I have lost. Take it to another project. My mind or something. There we go. Um, we're going to create a fresh C++ project. The reason that I have to do a C++ project, from my understanding, is the fact that when the plugin is created, it creates the binaries for that plugin. Those binaries have to be updated for a new version of the engine in a C++ project. So if we go in here and we don't even really need anything. I'll just throw in the third person. It doesn't really matter. I'll call it update plugin. So if we go in here and I'll just throw in the third person. It doesn't really matter. I want to create the project. I'm going to have to close it because I need to put the plugin in there. But I still have to create the project first. And I want to create the project. I'm going to have to close it.
trying to correct the actual title of this video while I'm streaming and waiting for this to load. I'm trying to correct the actual title. Of the so video. after about 50 years, 60, depends on how old you think you are. Um, the editor will the editor will start to load your plugin. So, so while this is doing that, I'm actually going to go over here. How old you think you are? And um, the editor will the drop editor this into my plugins, of the plugins folder. So while this doing we're going to create that, a plugins folder. Drop that in. We're going to extract that folder. here. Now when I extract it, I got to make sure it doesn't do the normal thing that zips do, which makes a folder in a folder. Which it did, so I'm going to cut this. Now, when I extract it, I gotta make sure it and paste it up here. So now that I just overwrote that folder. So now I have the name of my plugins and then the actual content and resources for that plugin. So now I can come in here and close the editor. And now it's gotta reconstruct the information for this plugin. So by going back over to this plugin, I can actually close this real quick. No, I do not want to save. Doesn't really matter. So by going back over to this plugin, I can actually close this real quick. So now this plugin, I mean this project has to be updated to know that this plugin is here. I think most of it is actually automated, but just in case, I usually come in here and say generate uh, Visual Studio project files. Which, what it'll do is scan the directory and see that anything that needs to be linked to the solution file will link it. So since we manually came in here and did the actual plugin folder, it will go in, see the plugin, and then add that to the solution file. If your plugin actually has um, C++ aspects like uh, new libraries, um, extra classes that may help you that you want to move, you move that you want to move from one project to another. That's the easiest way to get that into the solution is to remake your uh, solution file. So that way, when you actually open your solution, if you do have code files over there, when you expand it up, you should see. Your plugins, your asset collections, and then your uh, your source code if you have any source code here. But now that we know our asset um, our asset collections is in here, we can just recompile, and that's going to regenerate the binary files to allow that plugin to work into another engine. So even if I made this inside of 410. 411, 413, since it's content only, you don't have to worry about any weirdness with the update. Unless, for some strange reason, like Epic does sometimes, they change one little thing that completely breaks this, but so far, um, it's literally just been throwing the project in a blank C++ project, recompiling that project, and then bringing it over into whatever project you're currently working on for that engine. And then you can move that plugin from whatever folder to whatever folder that you need to work in. And then bringing it over into whatever project you're currently working on. And then once this is up, you should be able to come over here, check your content, and see your plugin over here, all updated for your new engine version. And then now, once you have that done, one thing I probably should have did in the actual editor. And then now, once you have that done, you can actually zip this and save it somewhere as your asset collections for whatever, uh, whatever engine version. So that way you have something that you have, you have a updated asset collection for that given engine version. Um, now, when it comes to making changes, things like that, I definitely wouldn't go back engine versions because there could be too many things that could go wrong going backwards, but going forwards, this would take care of anything that you want to do. Um, 
there could be too many things that could go wrong going backwards, but going forwards. This is so now if we go over to our plugins, this is one thing I wanted to show. Um, Once you update it, you can always go to your edit, and you can change this version number to be, you, you know, the engine version number, or change this actual friendly name to, you know, Asset Collections 4.15 or whatever. At least you have something there that shows that it's been updated to the new engine version. And while I'm on the subject of updating plugins, if I go, stop. If I go here and get my auto terrain. And this project should be a 14 project. So I got my auto terrain cover. I'm going to go into that same project that I just did for my custom plugin. And I'm just going to throw in the auto terrain. I'm going to that same project that I just did for my custom plugin. Regenerate. And again, it's going to go through, scan, do all this good little stuff. And then I can just open my plugin, recompile it, and then that plugin will be ready to go in that new engine version. And then it doesn't matter where I take it, I can take it to a blueprint only, um, a blueprint only project, another C project, or whatever. The binary has been updated. Is free to go wherever you need, to, need it to go, and then you'll be uh, good and ready to use whatever, however. Hopefully, that helps everyone just trying to understand exactly one, how to update this plugin, two, how to make your own asset library and add things to it so that you don't have to be stuck using a migrate feature that doesn't always necessarily work um, and add things to it so that and you don't have to be stuck using the migrate feature I guess that's it I can't think of anything else to say but hopefully that helps others if you have any questions let me know peace